Hi, <clears throat> this is another Mitchum Common watercolour. I took, took the photo for it on my bike um, a couple of weeks ago and I don't know how to post the original photo so that you can see that. So what I'll do, I'll, sh I'll show you a f uh, one of the paintings I've done from the particular photo and I'll work from that and see how we go. Alright, I'm using a, a hake and a rigger mostly and the, the palette is there with seven colours same as Steve Cronin and the Ron, Ron Manson techniques. It's a wet in wet watercolour paint, painting. And first of all, we just slush the water on the, on the paper, like that. And while it's still wet, and providing there's not too much water running down the sheet of paper, Go in with a sky colour, which uh, will be a raw sienna. It gives a nice, nice light in the sky for whatever you put on top of it. Uh, and since there's water in this, I what I put in the sky, I'll put in the, the water area as well. And I remember that it was quite a cloudy day when I when I visited this particular area in Mitcham, South London. So a bit of Payne's Grey and some alizarin crimson. It makes a good sky colour cloud in the water again. And perhaps a bit heavier with one of the clouds. With Payne's Grey and and um, and alizarin crimson. You can really have some fun with with this sort of painting but provided you, you you more or less do what you like with it when it's in this state wet state but once it starts to dry off you have to be very careful because you'll get all the cauliflowers and and they're very difficult to remove now i'm going to do some background trees and i'm going to use the sky colors ultramarine a bit of lizard and crimson and uh and the raw sienna and I'll come about about there I, I don't want to make it a particular sky painting but I'll just I'll just put some some color I don't want to go too stingy with the paint put a bit of paint otherwise it won't register it'll just dry into the paper the wet paper and you won't see it so I'll add so my horizon is going to be along there I'll try and vary the colours of the background trees. These are supposed to be in distance. I'll come as far as there because there are um, islands on this. It's, it's a small small lake in Mitcham, Mitcham Common and it's a lovely lovely spot and had the weather been a bit warm I would have gone out on my bike again and and taken some more photographs in, in all that snow we had. And my paintings of late have been criticised for being a bit bleak but it's winter and, and there's a lot of bleak colours about and you have to hunt for for the warms, the warm colours. So I just put a bit of background, uh, a bit of reflection in and I'll, the, my islands are going to go either side so I don't need to paint right into the corners and while that's there I'll just, with my finger, I'll just flick up, or it's just, when the paper's wet, after a couple of minutes, it starts to, sh to stretch out, but it won't buckle or, or croggle because you're re-clipping it as it grows. So it's, it's nice and flat. It's 130 pound Fabriano paper, which I buy from, from Art Discount. And you, you can buy 100, and, 100 sheets in a pack for about 30 pounds plus post and package, it's very, very good. Right, okay, so with my finger now, I'm just going to do some little trunks in there, bring them down into the reflection. But it's, it's very easy to overdo this, so a little goes a long way. That will do. I'll put some stronger trees in the background, but that's just to give it some sort of distance. 
and I'm trying to get my horizon fairly straight back. But it is a demo. Right, okay. Now the, the shine's just gone off the paper a bit now. So um, I'll give it a bit of a dry because I want to put these iron indicate the irons on there. Okay, I'm going to put the small island in over here first. So with a fairly dry brush, I put in the, the, the banks. I'm using ultramarine and burnt umber. They make a, a good grey, good warm grey. Uh, don't want the brush too 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 wet for this. Just a little bit of colour. As you go, just just add some warm, warm, warmish colours, and then now where the. Uh, I can strengthen the base of that with a, with a thicker mixture of, of both colours just to show where it meets the water. I'll put the reflections in later or whatever I put on top. Now because it's winter the, the, what's left of the foliage on the trees is rather a warm, <coughs> a warm colour so I'll just do that and I, I'll, I'll try and vary it with some raw sienna bit of blue, you can put some darks in there as well with a bit of Payne's grey and a bit of lemon yellow, add a bit of variety so that there are still some greens about but, but not a lot. Now I can put a bit of heavier, heavier stuff in there now. That'll do for an island. There we go. Bit some. Just show some branches and some some trunks. Right. Okay. That'll do for one island for the moment. And I'll do a similar one, but but bigger on the other side. I'm going to make two the same. Does it look monotonous? And it won't look. Uh, authentic so same sort of colours uh, so I come come over uh, about, about there this brush holds a lot of water and it disguises itself and traps the unwary so if you use one of these types of brush watch out for it it's a great great brush but it, it does provide a bit of a trap for the unwary so I'll, I'm going to clean the brush and put some uh, autumn colour or winter colours Again on that side, but I'll make this these these bigger. Right, that's quite good. So, whoops. Right, okay, that's, that's that. Oh. <coughs> now the next thing I'm going to do is put in some reflections for that. And to do that, I need to dry off the water area.
clean brush, clean water. Just go across there. Don't, don't be too hard with this because you don't want to disturb the paint underneath. Right, so let's check. Hang on, trying to duplicate the colours. A bit of dark in there now, just. Perhaps a little darker there. And made the colours below similar to the ones above. Right, now I've got uh, those trunks reflected in the water. Right, something like that. All right, let's just dry. what we're working from again uh, we're working from that to something like that <coughs> but I'll probably forget the figures or probably won't bother to put the little figures in at the back because this is a, a demonstration and we'll see how we go right I'm now going to put a bit of foreground in and we try to do that with a, a maximum of economy so just mix up some palette colors some palette gray And then get some darks over that. Right, okay. If that dries, we'll <coughs> we'll um, add to that. And with a and just just stretch the paper a bit. Mm -hmm. Right, okay. Now with with some sort of plastic card you can put some pebbles stuff to show that there's a bit of shingle on the on this bank here. But you don't have to do, a, do an awful lot, but it just adds a bit of texture and a bit of interest to it. And it's much easier than trying to paint it in. I don't know what Turner used to use before plastic was discovered. Right, now I'm going to put uh, a tree coming up from this side, going up into the into the sky. So burnt umber and grey, uh, sorry, burnt umber and ultramarine, but it's a nice grey. You don't want the brush too wet for this. And there we go. So just form a frame on this side. You can have a lot of fun with this this brush doing doing a lot of fine calligraphy in trees and branches, trunks and to a certain extent it needs a life of its own, but uh, I want that to show up there quite heavily. So I can do that. If you're living in England at the moment, the weather is foul. Got a lot of rain. But painting in my loft space, I can see lovely skies and all these lovely raw sienna lights and the, and the clouds coming over and changing and sunsets. It's absolutely lovely, really inspiring. 
There, that, that'll do, that'll do for that. Right, let's go have a nice tree. There you go. <coughs> right now, this tree is going to come in here and it's growing out of that bank, which would be like the photograph, but I, I don't know, I really don't know how to add that to the beginning of the video unless I managed to get a photograph of the of it off the memory stick or something at the local camera shop and and show you that way but for the time being since I'm new to all of this I think I'll put two there because if I, if I just leave one it's just going to be a mirror image of the other one and that's what I want to avoid. I try to avoid repetition if you can help it. But the problem is you, you do one you think well that looks good I'll do another. Then you do another. Before you know where you are you've got a page full of trees all look, or clouds all looking the same. We all do it. It's, uh, right. Can really have some some fun with this uh, this brush. Paintings don't have to take an eternity. This is an impression. All I ever try to do is an impression of a scene because that's what I do. Some people paint very exactly, and there's no. No accounting for what people like or what they do. There's, there are so many different styles, and there are no no great rules. You make it up as you go along, and you do what what actually works. Because we're trying to create an impression here. Right, there's some some grass in there. Right, okay. Now I'll go back to the other side and uh, and do some. I'll do some uh, some brushwork that will hopefully indicate a lot of branches coming to the end of, or like the, the tiny little branches. But you need a fairly dry brush for this. And it looks as if, if I put some little branches in with, with the rigger afterwards, it'll, hopefully these will look as if there are lots of little twigs at the end of the, the main branches. Right, okay, that'll do that. Now this one, I want just a little bit warmer, so I'll use some burnt umber in the, in the mix there. Right, that'll do for that. Brush in the water, and I'll just do some rigor work right in the branches. Same colours, ultramarine and burnt umber. Holding the brush at the end, that's it. The whole idea, or the aim of this type of painting, is to stop fiddling and fussing the things to death. Knowing when to stop and knowing when enough is enough, because it's so easy to to poke and prod it with all the little brushes, but with a big with a big brush, you can't do that. Right, I think we'll let that side go and do the same on the other side. Just to justify all this. Right, okay, that'll do for that. <coughs> There's a little bit of detail in, in the foreground, and I'm going to try to warm it up a little bit now to give some sort of aerial perspective to so the warmer colours come forward and the, and the greys and the blues take the painting back. And we've got to create, as a painter, an illusion of depth. Um,
bit of red. This light red is, is a very, very good colour. It lasts forever, but it is incredibly intense and a little goes a long way. It's a good mixer with other colours. Just grassy stuff. Right. Okay, I'll sign that. That's a, another demonstration for you. That's my name. Well, now what I'll do, I'll quickly put that in a in a, in a mount. And we'll see what it looks like. I'm still here. Right, there we are. A painting, Mitcham Common, Seven Island Ponds, 28th of January 2013, I think. Thanks for looking, I hope you've enjoyed it. Goodbye. <laughs>